This video will demonstrate a new flexible endoscopic approach to cholecystectomy in an animal model. Our aim was to determine the feasibility and technical aspects of transvaginal flexible endoscopic cholecystectomy. The field of minimally invasive surgery has seen tremendous growth over the past 15 years. The use of laparoscopy has been described for nearly all abdominal operations. Natural orifice transluminal endoscopic surgery, or NOTES, is currently being explored as the next frame shift in minimally invasive surgery. Transgastric human appendectomy, as well as peritoneoscopy, splenectomy, and cholecystectomy in animal models have been reported in the literature. After approval from the Institutional Animal Care and Use Committee at Columbia University, a transvaginal laparoscopically assisted endoscopic cholecystectomy was performed on four 30 kilogram Yorkshire pigs. Two 5 millimeter laparoscopic trocars were placed. One trocar was used only for video documentation, and only one trocar was used for a laparoscopic grasper to retract the fundus of the gallbladder. A 12 millimeter dual channel therapeutic gastroscope was inserted into the vagina either with or without a flexible shape lock device that can provide rigidity and additional degrees of freedom. An incision was made in the posterior wall of the vagina using needle knife cautery to enter the abdomen. Once the gastroscope was safely in the peritoneal cavity, no further laparoscopic visualization was used except for video documentation. The gallbladder was visualized with the endoscope, grasped with endoscopic forceps, and handed to the laparoscopic grasper. This demonstrates the effectiveness of available flexible endoscopic devices to manipulate the gallbladder. Once the cystic structures were visualized by retracting the gallbladder, dissection was started. The peritoneum overlying the duct and artery was grasped and opened with a flexible endoscopic hook cautery device. A blunt endoscopic grasper was used to dissect the tissues around the duct. Spreading the jaws provides fine dissection. Lateral deflection or movement of the tip of the endoscope provides greater tissue spreading. Further fine dissection allows the cystic duct to be isolated. Controlling the cystic duct with clips, as is currently performed in laparoscopic cholecystectomy, presents difficulty using the currently available endoscopic clips. This demonstrates the limitation of endoscopic clips, which meet and occlude tissue only at the very distal tips. Given failure of the clips to occlude the duct, we proceeded to use an endoscopic loop ligature. Deflection of the loop against the liver, and then passing the grasper through the loop, overcomes the difficulty presented by the parallel orientation of the instruments exiting the scope. Once the duct is grasped, the loop is passed over the duct and closed around it. This demonstrates the adequacy of the loop. Next, the artery is isolated using the hook to dissect tissue behind it. Once isolated, the artery is divided using cautery.
This demonstrates use of the flexible shape lock over tube to stabilize the scope. This is an insulated tip cautery device which avoids the risk of perforating the gallbladder. Again, deflection of the tip of the scope allows for wider tissue dissection. Similar to laparoscopic surgery, perhaps the most useful device for dissecting the gallbladder from the liver bed is the hook cautery. The general principle of regrasping the tissue at intervals to allow for adequate tension applies here as well as in other surgical procedures. Several techniques are used to accomplish tissue cutting during this dissection. These include linear deflection of the tip of the scope, rotational deflection of the tip of the scope while tissue is grasped through the second channel, advancing and withdrawing the cautery hook along grasped tissue, and the hook and pull technique where tissue is grasped and drawn back towards the scope. Once the gallbladder is completely freed from the liver, it is grasped and retracted either into the overtube or directly brought out through the vagina to be removed from the abdomen. Aside from leakage of bile from perforation of the gallbladder, there were no intraoperative complications. Operative time ranged from less than two to over two and a half hours. Based on our experience in the porcine model, we believe that a transvaginal endoscopic cholecystectomy is feasible in humans.